For most, carp are the king of fish. Thousands scour our country's waters in search of the elusive. On a fishing adventure to the best lakes on the planet, and we have one mission to catch monster carp. Across that water and into Europe, fish of our dreams, Neil. Are we still getting the ferry? Yeah. Where is it? About an hour back that way. What, we've driven past it? Oh, yeah. What, we've got to get going then? We should do, really. What a waste of time. We've had another hour in bed. This week, we are in Hungary. Whether it be stags or goo, it's a place that's famous for the lash. And not only that, it's home to the biggest king carp in the world. It doesn't take a lot for me to get excited about carp fishing, but this trip is on another level. Do you know, this time next week, we could be world record holders. That's the craziest thing about it. Genuinely, we could be walking away world record holders. So I could. What actually is the current world record? 112 pounds. You are king joking, aren't you? I am not king joking. Every single time that alarm goes, you're going to be thinking, mm, it could be £100 around the end. Oh, oh, oh. How many big ones are in there? There are rooks for a minute. Did I get caught more in the daytime? Not really. It's mostly nighttime bites, to be honest with you. Hey, you know me, Tom, I love a bit of night fishing. If we do get a £100, are you going to be right lifting it with him? What, you beat me arms? Come. <laughs> what? I've got the same diameter here as you have there. What are you talking about? Yours have looked like you're out of focus, they're all soft. Wait, mine ain't that small, they'll be fine. Do you know what? That is checkmate. That's not checkmate, mate. That is just checkmate. Oh, look, I can still move me king. That's not checkmate. That's checkmate. You don't know what you're doing. It's checkmate. I play drafts all the time. We're heading 100 miles southwest of Budapest to Lake Euraqua, a 25 acre gravel pit home to officially the largest carp on the planet. The place here, the Euraqua, is the only place where you can get and find the biggest carp on Earth. They are only here in this place. Unbelievably, this lake has produced a number of carp over 100 pounds, but the jewel in Alex's crown is the current world record, which stands at a jaw-dropping 112 pounds 14 ounces. This beast attracts anglers from all over the globe with one thing on their mind, breaking the world record. The mother country of carp fishing is England. So for me, I love English guys, UK guys, so I hope uh, Neil uh, is not struggling the boat and Tom remind me of Richard Hammond. But anyway, they will get success for fishing, you know, I'm sure. Look at this place. This is beautiful. We've got cut grass, pruned swims, and the biggest carp in the world. That'll do nicely. We're on our Ollie Bob's deal. We are. So you bring all the food, yeah? No, you told me not to. No, I didn't. You said we're going hungry. No. You're a f You what? really are stupid, aren't you? What do you mean? We're, we're in Hungary. Oh, no, that's my bad. The 25 five acres of water east. We'd be fishing two swims during the trip, starting in swim three on the south bank of the lake before moving around to swim four on the west bank. Our starting swim has two sides. The left side, which faces an island close to the west margin, and the right side, which faces out to the deepest part of the lake. OK, what are we saying then? Rock, paper, scissors, two sides? I think so. Okay. You normally beat me at that, All so... Right. I'm going right. to scissors this time, OK? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> 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 Every yes. time! Yes! OK, well, you've got dibs. Well, seeing as all the world records come from the left-hand side, forgot to tell you that bit, I'm going to pick the left. In all our years of fishing, we had never fished for carp this big. It was by far our biggest challenge to date, 
I could tell Spooner was already struggling under the pressure, but we needed to stay focused and find our spots. Ooh. Nice soft drop. What you want to be looking for in places like this is a really soft bottom. All of the big fish feed in the silt, so I'm going to be trying to find myself some mud. Most people that don't know what they're doing look for gravel. I found a bit of gravel out there. Now, when you've got a real firm bit of gravel, everything's easier. Your rigs are always presented, the bait's always sitting pretty, ready for when the carp come in. So if I can hone down that exact spot, that seems like the perfect starting point. I would be targeting one area at just over 100 yards out, where all three rods would be in the same zone. Whilst I'd be fishing two rods on the right-hand side of the island with my third in the channel close to the island margin, but first I had to survive the most dangerous part of the trip, getting in the boat with Neil. I'm not going to lie, I always feel a bit nervous when you're driving. Why are you being like that? Just... So what are you doing? Just be careful. Oh, I would sit down if I were you. <sighs> One thing we have learned from fishing hungry before is that there are lots of carp in all of these lakes. There are lots of small carp and there are lots of big carp. But to get away from the small ones, you can't put in too much small bait. So we are mainly going to be putting out boilies, big ones, 20 millers and 26 millers. And then even the mixture of bait we're putting out is probably 70 or 80% boilie. So we're not going to be wasting time catching loads of small ones and hopefully just get amongst the big ones. We've chosen the end of spring for our record-breaking attempt, as it's when carp are at their biggest, but it's a gamble. If the spring temperatures rise too quickly, it can force smaller species in the lake to spawn early. If this happens, carp will be far less likely to eat our bait because of all of the natural food on offer. A prematurely high water temperature can also force the carp themselves to spawn, and if that happens, it's game over, as the fish only have one thing on their mind. Right now, rig-wise, I'm not changing anything to what I normally do, really. I've got a very simple spinner rig on there to a leg clip. But the main thing is that because we're fishing for the biggest fish we've ever fished for, I've got a size 2 hook on there and not a 4 or 6. That is a massive hook for carp. And a 26 mil hook bait, which is much bigger than we'd normally fish as well. The point is, is that that's going to go out there and the little fish aren't going to be able to pick it up. Only 100 pounders, I hope, anyway. Dovey's gone for free spinner rigs, but as I'm a little bit more experienced, I much prefer a combi rig, which gives the bait a little bit more separation from the hook. I've got three different hook baits to start with. I've got a very big 26 mil wafter, a little snowman rig with a little almond tipper on, and finally, one of my favourites, an isotonic dumbbell. Basically, you never really know what, what flavour, what colour is going to take a carp's fancy. So by keeping my options open at the start, I can hopefully spot a pattern, which will lead to a lot more bites. I've got a little sneaky rod down to my left-hand side. I'm just going to do a little line of boilies only for the big fish, all the way from the end of the island, right to where my rod's placed. The thought of fishing for a 100 pounder is just, it's outrageous when you think about it. We've been doing this for years, and never have I had this buzz before. I just really hope it happens. Too far left and short. <laughs> I've never seen you car so badly in my life. Why are you, why are you standing like that? What do you have to look at me for? What? What do you have to look at me for? It's right over the other one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even cast. <laughs> You've got nervous because they're big fish. It's like being around a, a beautiful girl. You've gone all weird. <laughs> After Spooner eventually got his rods out, it was time to find out if all the commotion had scared off every fish in the swim. Just as it got into dark, we've been getting a few bleeps on this left-hand rod, which is down the left-hand side of the island with foilies out there only. And now I've got a calf on and I'm shaking. It was our first night fishing for the world record and Dovey was in. 
I'm actually shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Neil. I'm nervous. I'm not even playing it. <laughs> A good fish there. I can't quite tell how big it is. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a big fish. Get in yes. there, Neil! <laughs> well done, mate. Yes! Brilliant. It's a really good sign. The rods haven't been out that long. And we've got a long old common in there. I can't really work out how big that is. Well, I'll tell you in a minute, I'll weigh it. Alright then. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Is 46.6. Way, that's a good start. Well done, Thomas. A long, lean, powerful 46 pound common. There are fish in here nearly three times that size. How ridiculous is that? Ooh, thank you, old boy. That is a lovely way to get off the mark. You didn't fancy catching last night then, Neil, no? I don't like to get off to a too good a start. No, I understand. I like to really build the pressure on myself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to catch a 100 pound on the first night, do you? No, I want to, I want to build up to it. <sighs> you didn't really deserve to catch one last night. I didn't. I fished quite badly I've yesterday. I've seen you angle a lot better than Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It'll be better today, then I'll get a bite and it'll be warranted. Spooner seemed to have shaken off his nerves and as the sun shone down on us, we were both full of optimism for what the day would bring. Oh, no, 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 no. 